there's a ghost meeting that Jennifer's going to. Oh, and Mike Daniels for Tim. Yeah. Is this just having a piece of So uh, Wall Street places a lot of value on these hypergrowth companies that aren't yet making a profit because they get it. The people who get it are saying, look, here are companies that are growing more rapidly than ever was possible before. It's possible that this is like the great gold land rush. You know, they're staking a claim. Here are companies like Amazon, like Yahoo, like others, who are running out there and locking up as much real estate as they can. The financial markets are pouring money into these companies, and they're grabbing as much as they can grab. Oh, voicemail hell. Now I'm stuck. Pressure is second nature to Steve Jurvetson. Even a weekly Frisbee game is an opportunity for a potential deal that could be the next big hit in the Valley. No one has sort of understood or really explained the social dynamic, the race that people feel, and the, the sense of pressure to achieve. Everyone feels like they're racing the clock here, that you're in a, a land rush, and if you're in a land rush, the battle goes to the swift. It's indirect money. Money is not really a motivator. It's only a way of keeping score. Life is one big smooth stuff. This is like a large cocktail party, a large gathering. It's something we do every day, every week. We find opportunities, cocktail events, after, after hours events, frisbee games during the week. It's an uh, opportunity to mingle. Each year we hold a party called a Cybernetical Schmooze Fest. We invite about a thousand people from the industry to come and see our companies. We want to help all of our companies partner and form relationships with other companies in the Valley. It's almost criminal to think of someone who would say, I'm just in it for the money. It's the reason you're doing this is you want to change the world, you want to have an impact. Hey, Charles, hey, good to see you. Hey, wait, let me check. Did you shave just for us? Hey, Sabir. Good day. I'm glad you can make it. I really consider myself to be a product of the Silicon Valley. In fact, my, my success over here could only have been possible because I was in Silicon Valley. Hey, where are you going? Come on. Ah! starting company and it's like you know at your mom's house and like the cats getting in your dish drive and all that stuff right. it doesn't quite feel the same when you go public this is the story you want to tell the pr agents like right. well i remember well back when mom came in and gave us our marketing strategy she said oh son you should shave before that meeting you know but uh but you don't shave pretty much I don't no, yeah yeah i know what you mean uh, that's what we usually put and you've got a really big chin yeah yeah everyone's saying try it go for it you know you've got the ability you've got the motivation, you've got the support, go for it. We uh, met with them, and we had the uh, horrible lapse of judgment not to invest. It was, uh, it was close. I mean, what you've got going on with the internet is, it's basically like an earthquake, where the epicenter is Silicon Valley, and it's, it's shaking up the whole world. I think the internet is, is very much in this sort of independent mindset of punk rock. I mean, punk rock is, uh, is a lot of it's just about thinking for yourself. Do you want me to jump up and down? Yeah. I really, 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 like it. really, really, really like it. It's the gold rush. Right? It's everybody's out um, claiming their stake. But uh, but in the end, uh, it's sort of a pyramid scheme. I think I'll find you. The people who are in early will, will do well. Uh, and everybody else is going to have is going to wake up in the morning and have a bad surprise. I remind myself constantly in my definition of success, and there's so many reminders all around of other people's definitions of success. I see people selling their companies for 100, 200 million dollars, and I know that I could have done that uh, easily. And then I ask myself, would I be happy? What are they doing now? Is that what makes me tick? Is that what I'm really doing? And my answer is always no. Every industry in America and in the world is slowly but surely becoming an information business. And whatever physical manifestation we may have is an afterthought. Despite a few celebrated successes, the IPO game is far from a sure thing. Of the 175 internet companies that went public this year, almost one-third are trading below their initial offering price. I'm James Hattori. See you next time on CNN Perspective.